So we created this manual to educate the people of Bowsey State about anemia, which is a condition where they're, the body cannot produce a sufficient amount of healthy red blood cells. And, and these are the blood cells that have hemoglobin, which is the protein that transmits oxygen. So that means that there's a general lack of oxygen throughout the body, which can produce a lot of symptoms that we will be discussing today. So hi, I'm Sunny. I'm from Toronto, Canada. Hi, I'm Bennett Meeker. I'm from Gardner, Massachusetts. Hi, I'm Neela Elingovin, and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Hi, I'm Sarah George, and I'm from Orland Park, Illinois. Hi, I'm Emma Rubenacker, and I'm from New York. Hi, I'm Hannah George, and I'm from Orland Park, Illinois. Hi, I'm Nicole Nesterovich, and I'm also from Orland Park, Illinois. The main cause of anemia is malnutrition. It's from a lack of red blood cells, which means that the hemoglobin and iron levels are low, and, and that causes iron deficiency anemia. Behavioral and lifestyle factors of anemia are cultural beliefs or customs from parents sites, pregnancy, hemolysis, and alcohol consumption, which lowers new, the ability to get nutrition. Environmental and habitat influences are poor sanitation, useful drinking water, unsafe drinking water, and inadequate personal hygiene conditions, unclean fuel from cooking, poor toilet facilities, and non-concrete houses from long-term path pathogen ex exposure, which, which is from and cold and gluten disease is, is, a, is a cause of anemia from the climate. And it's rare in the fact that it affects only one in every 300,000 people who have anemia get it that way. And, and you get it um, when you're outside and in extreme cold and your immune system um, destroys your red blood cells. Um, anemia isn't a transmittable disease because it doesn't pass from pe person to person. This is what I like to call the big nine. These are the most common and important symptoms when looking for anemia. These symptoms are yellowing of the eyes and skin, excessive sweat and swelling of the feet and legs, weakness of the body, cold and clammy hands, shortness of breath, fatigue, dizziness, headaches, and uh, these symptoms vary based on severity of the condition, which goes from mild to moderate to severe. Severe cases of, um, severe cases of anemia can lead to organ failure, such as heart failure and kidney failure. And anemia left untreated is especially dangerous in children because it can stunt their growth because they don't have the sufficient nutrients they need to grow. And um, anemia is also commonly overlooked if presented with other diseases such as malaria because their symptoms are very similar, like such as uh, weakness, full body weakness and fatigue. So we wanna, we wanna make sure that doesn't happen. Anemia poses many impacts to health and society, especially on individual health through the manifestation of various symptoms, which you previously mentioned as a big nine. It also impacts daily life by decreasing work capacity, increasing susceptibility to infection, and increasing risk of maternal and fetal morbidity and mortality. In 2010, a study showed that global anemia was prevalent in 32.9% of the population. Um, anemia also impacts public health by draining the resources. For example, anemia requires iron, which is also necessary for other diseases. So they are not able to use it because their anemia is so prevalent in um, Nigeria. Um, so because anemia takes such a physical toll on the human body, this results in productivity losses and economic costs, especially within the workforce. Um, also, anemia often affects pregnant women and children, sometimes leading to complications that could lead to developmental issues. This, in turn, can have an um, impact on the population growth and sustainability. 
Um, so we've made two community workshops, and the main objective of the workshop is to give Bauchi, a community in Bauchi State a better understanding about the symptoms and the risk factors of anemia. So our target audience is mainly women and children, but more specifically the women, because they not only put the food on the table for the families, but just in general, they're the ones that take care of the entire family. So we believe that if we can educate the women on anemia, then it'll have a better and bigger impact. And so we've made two activities. Um, one of them is a little game called Spot the Difference. It's a little work. It's a little worksheet. And then another one is where we grow sweet potatoes. So this right here is our first workshop. So up on the screen behind me, you guys should be seeing a flyer. And on this flyer, there is a variety of common symptoms of anemia. And on one picture of, let's say, a, a foot, one foot is normal, and then the other foot is swollen. And basically, we want to create a workshop in which a community and the women specifically in that community gather around and they are given out these little worksheets. And then basically they're given some markers and um, a an leadership initiatives team member will be asking them, could you please circle which one is a symptom of anemia and which one looks normal? Now, there's two ways in which this could be carried out. If there is enough staff um, in Nigeria, then we'd love for the women to be broken up into smaller groups, because in that case, it could be a more interactive and engaging environment. They could have more opportunity to kind of ask questions from the LI team member and just in general have more interaction. But again, if that is not available, this could also be carried out in a large group setting in which just one team member leads the women in the community slowly through the work, she work uh, sheet. And basically the way you win is you get the most symptoms right. But our goal is that through this workshop, everyone will be winners by be being able to identify which are the symptoms of anemia, not only for themselves, but for their children. Our next plan is to give out about five sweet potatoes for a family. This is because each sweet potato has about 3.5, 3.4 milligrams of iron in the potato, which is about 50% of the RDI if you are a child. This is mainly in support of having it as a supplement for meat, as there is a cultural belief that the men get the meat in the house, and this leaves the children and the wives without proper protein and iron in their diet. This is something that families can incorporate in their familiar meals as another way to supplement this meat. Our, the, it will be wrapped in newspaper with home planting instructions stapled on top. That way they can cut off the root and continue planting and growing the potatoes at home. That way it is sustainable. They should follow our one potato a day campaign. That way they have a proper amount of iron in their diet. So behind me, you can see um, the instruction manual for how to plant, how to replant the sweet potato. So after they eat it, they can take the root and regrow them. So it's, so our initiative is sustainable and it can last for a long time after LI staff have left. Um, the language is simplistic, I hope, and the pictures are also pretty self-explanatory so that everyone can understand them and we will explain them as well. Um, so for our budget, uh, Mr. Bailey did give us $500. We did go a little bit under it for a total of $441. So the majority of the cost goes towards the sweet potatoes because there's five per family. And in a community, there's about 100 to 120 families. So if we give about five potatoes to each family, that comes to about 600 potatoes, which is a total of $334. And then next, we need newspapers to wrap the potatoes in, which is about $22. And then we need a pack of ink to print all the games out, which is about $32. And then we need the paper to print the, to print out the games and the pamphlet, which is about $6. And then we need the markers to be able to circle the correct answers for the first community workshop spot the difference, which is about $47. So this is a handout that we'll be giving out to everybody that comes to our workshop. It summarizes the populations that are at high risk, what symptoms to look for, what causes anemia, and then also what to do in the case that they do have anemia. These are our resources. Thank you for listening. We appreciate your time. Oh, uh, I would say awesome, guys. That was good. Um, uh, I, I truly like... Um, the last part of it, um, the issue of potato, 
it's something that is common in northern Nigeria, and um, I never knew it has this rich iron content, truly. Really. Um, yeah, and bottom A, right? So you could imagine, and then I will mention another other um, um, use of it, and then why it is so appropriate at this level to be used for uh, prevention of anemia. Uh, one, northern Nigeria, most of it is Sahara, Sahara to desert or Sahelian desert. Uh, so, and this grows very well in there. It doesn't need much water requirement. So you could imagine it can grow easily. Then it is, like you say, rich in iron. And then again, it has high fiber content because it's been fiber is needed in most of our diet, especially for, it's very good for gastrointestinal season. And then it's readily available and can be sustained. So in fact, with 300 and like $30 you mentioned, you'll be able to get so many that you give to many families. I'm truly uh, in love with that idea. And I think it's great. Um, first, another thing that I can also mention is the, when you mention that red blouse, I like the idea. Uh, you seen a, a slide that is full of blood and then the one that is scanty. It's, people can be pictorial and that can really help. Uh, and then maybe just some pictures, too much of India and stuff like that to our Indian colleagues generally because we want it to be truly local. You can maybe change in terms of the symptomatology when you have some people that are not truly maybe uh, of that uh, region, maybe a bit uh, problem. Uh, and then the spot, the difference game is also very important using the worksheet. Um, just one clarification. I can understand the relationship between poor toilet facilities and occurrence of anemia, basically because maybe intestinal parasites, right? Maybe poor sanitation can lead to somebody having a pico oral disease, something like hookum, I can relate. I don't understand non-concrete houses and anemia. Maybe you can just help us later to explain. Thank you, guys. Uh, congratulations. Congratulations, guys. Firstly, you all look really good. Like, as a group, you look really nice. You, I, I don't know if you color coordinated, because it's literally like black, white, black, white, white, black. It's, yeah, the aesthetic is 100%. So very good job on that. Um, your presentation was good. You, It was clear that you had information about anemia. However, my issue was I was kind of like oscillating between is this anemia generally or are you supposed to refer to nutritional anemia? I think you're supposed to just talk about nutritional anemia, which is why he's asking you so many questions because none of those other things had to do with nutritional anemia. They had to do with other kinds of anemia. Um, the sweet potato idea is great. I also like the idea of sustainability. Your poster was very nice. He talked as well, I, and I completely agree, like the first couple of slides were not reflective of Africans or even people in Bauchi. So all I could say was like, where is this or what's going on? But yeah, so that can be a bit distracting if it doesn't look like the people or represent the community. However, I could tell that you still did a lot of work knowing about Bauchi. It would have been good if the pictures reflected that because the slide might not, like you might not be there to explain what's going on. All in all, good job. You should feel really proud of yourself. You should feel proud of your teammates. You all supported each other really well. And congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, anemia, risk factors and symptoms. Everything have already been said by my colleague. Um, I love also, I also love the spot the difference game. A lot of people play it. And it's just, even if I see it online, you know, quickly, I just, it's a, a catchy game. So it's a good one. Like I said, my colleagues have already said majority of what needs to be said. You guys did amazingly well. Uh, you have prepared, you showed confidence, you showed knowledge, you showed information. So um, congratulations and um, thank you for this wonderful presentation.